Hi, I'm Casey Kasem. This letter comes in from Kathy in Oklahoma. She writes, Dear Casey, I like getting fucked in my anus and in my cunt. Could you play anal cunt for my boyfriend? I also go ass to mouth. Well, we'll get that right on for you. Here's anal cunt on American Top Ford. Hope and Anthony. The virus is spreading. Probably me back to being a kid and you go to camp or something and you hang out with these people for like a week, two weeks, and, and you think like... Uh, you went through the nom together. Yeah, and it's just a week of playing, you know, dumb sports and canoeing and crap. And making pottery on days it rains. And then your parents come, and uh, and then you say goodbye. And, and even as a little kid, you realize, oh, no, I'll never see these people again. I'm real sad. I'm real sad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm extremely sad. This is, I don't know what this means. But But if you really step back and think about it. You know, especially if you went to camp as a kid. It was only a, a stupid week in your life. Who, I, who cares if you don't see these people ever again? I went to summer camp, so it was longer than that. It was like... You got to go all summer? Yeah, it was pretty much the whole summer at what was called uh, the the Paul Bunyan Day Camp. Ew. Uh, when I was living in Central Islip. Paul Bunyan Day Camp. Babe, the blue ox. <laughs> Wait, was it on Long but, Island? Yeah, yeah. So you didn't even go get to go away? No, we had to take a bus there, but... It was just like, it wasn't that far. It was what, in the middle of the woods somewhere, and the a, counselors were all a bunch of, like, pot smoking, dope fiends. So you took a you took a bus a couple exits down the highway to camp. That's yeah, not yeah. Going to summer camp, you have to like you have to go over a bridge and and start going up the mountains and stuff. No, we came home every day. Ew. It was it was day camp. You didn't even get to sleep uh, sleep over with all your no. with all your hormones going crazy in your body. No, no, I I, I think I was a little young for the hormone things oh going my. crazy, but oh my god, it was uh, yeah, it was day camp. So we take a bus there, and and then they bus us back. That's, was, yeah. that's like that's summer camp for poor people. If for poor people, we tend to live in clusters. Right. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was real boring, too. Like, after the first week, they ran out of stuff for us to do. And we didn't have a cool... It wasn't a cool camp with, like, canoeing and, and archery and things you see at, like, cool camps. It was pretty much... You either played softball or, or like, soccer or kickball outside. Or when it rained, they took you inside where you made, like, ashtrays out of clay. Yeah. And that was it. Nothing fun about it. It's retard camp. It really was. My mother just sent us there because she wanted to like have fun a, a summer, and she didn't want the kids what around. Do you, what do you mean by her. What do you mean by have fun? Probably have sex with multiple partners. <laughs> uh, I have no idea. I don't know what she was into back then. <laughs> she was being groovy in her culottes. I don't know. It was, uh, yeah. So she just you know sent us all off to day camp. Uh, what was that? I mean, it, it sucked. I did a little of that uh, day camping too, and sent yeah. Camp Alvernia, I think it was called. I don't know. The one on the uh, on the lake down by the lake. Well, uh, on the harbor there in Centerport. I think it was Moose Lake. <laughs> it's closer, so I made that assumption. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the one that's right by the lake there with the because uh, the, that's one that they like. It's a a camp. For for nannies, I think or pairs. I don't know. This is going it's right way by Centerport. I used to take my jet ski by there, and they would all lay out topless because that's what they did in Europe, and they were all from like yeah. Sweden and stuff. Oh yeah. So they'd lay out there, and you saw nothing but like these puttering uh, jet skis doing circles. And I was one of them. Think could do like sixty miles an hour on the water, and I'm just doing, You're doing like a, a, a mile and a half in front of this place. Of course, you got there. <laughs> Of course you have to. Place is legendary. Went to camp when I was a boy. My mother sent Aww. me to camp when I was thirteen. I didn't want to go, and I remember we were such dorks that one of the guys thought it'd be cool if we all pretended we were dead when the counselor came in. So we all laid out like oh, we were God. dead. What? What was wrong with you? I don't know. It wasn't <laughs> you, my idea. I just played you along. You just did not have a normal childhood, Jimmy. <laughs> so you guys so, were playing dead because you were because you you heard the rumors of this guy touching kids probably, and that was the only way to. You could think play of, dead. Yeah, play dead so he didn't uh you know, violate you. No, he was uh, he was young. He was like sixteen or seventeen. He was young, a young dude. He mm -hmm. wasn't like he was like one of those guys that just up for the summer trying. And how old were you? 
13. Yeah. Not perfect. Summer creep. Perfect for the hormones that are raging through your body. But you, uh, you, you, what, did he come in and wake you up every morning? No, but I forget what he, he walked in and we all just pretended we were dead. Like, what? Did or, it work? No. Of course it didn't. We should have been. <laughs> oh, watch out. These guys are nuts. Did you, did you put ketchup around your neck or something? I think someone did do that. Not yeah. on my neck. But oh, yeah, it was like, no. we were just, we were, we were, and what did he posing do? hacks. What did he do? Just dip his lunch in, into the kid's neck? No, the worst. For a little the, extra ketchup? The worst sound was when he walked in and you heard the eh, of the, the screen door and he looked around and then just eh, and he walked out. <laughs> it was nothing. No. And you thought it was going to be so cool when he went, oh my God, they're dead. But there was just nothing. But nothingness. No, the dorks had to just get up and go, all right, well, it uh-huh. had no impact. Let's say hi to Scott on Long Island. What's up, Scott? Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey. Hey, I, I went to that Paul Bunyan death camp myself. Oh, you did? Was, I did, and it was no picnic. And Anthony, don't you BS. <laughs> you what? know it was no picnic. Well, well you, I, I, I know. What do you have to add to this? Uh, they, they, the, uh, the instructors, they throw you in a pool whether you knew how to swim or not. If you didn't, you know, if, if you didn't get it to the front and back, you know, you wouldn't get no lunch. They throw you in the woods and... They take off and leave you in there for hours. Hey, yeah, that happened to me. Oh, yeah, it happened to everybody. The, it really was terrible. I got tied to a tree, um, and then this big fat counselor took his big meaty paw and and smacked my stomach till he, he gave me pink belly, where you just go bam, 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 and, and then left me tied to the tree. That's that's what you remember from that incident. Yeah, you yeah. blocked out everything else. I hope so. <laughs> you hope blocked it, just it stays, out. I hope it stays repressed <laughs> forever. Wait, why did you oh, do that? Because they were all a bunch of. I'd use the you know use the scum word, uh, and that's what they were. They were just uh, a bunch of low lives that were put in charge of these kids at the day camp. Well, who um, else is going to do that job in the summer? I know. Like uh, like cool kids were like lifeguarding and caddying and doing all that other stuff that was kind of cool. It was a a crap uh, day camp that had uh, the worst counselors ever. I remember that guy. He he was like, I think he was Russian or something. And he had this big, like, meaty wrestler hand, big fat mitt, and he he just, like, smashed me in the stomach as I was tied to a tree. He tied me to a tree. Did you tell your mother? (laughs) Yeah. What'd she do? She didn't care. She had a date. <laughs> she was wild back then. Wild, I tell you. Probably with him. <laughs> she probably paid him to do that to you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Scott. All right. Sorry to bring up some bad memories. But- oh, yeah. Thanks. It's Paul all Bunyan good. death camp. They called it the Paul Bunyan death camp. Yeah, let's We say- arrived in boxcars. <laughs> let's say uh, good afternoon to Cleveland. Uh, what's up, Ray? So I used to go to a day camp out out here um, in a suburb of Cleveland, and it was the worst camp I've ever been to in my entire life. The counselors had no control of the kids. They thought they did, but they never did. You had counselors picking on kids, putting them down, all that stuff. So I really relate to what Anthony's saying about, like, camps and stuff. I think we all pretty much went to a camp growing up. Oh, yeah. And why do you, you didn't need to control the kids. Let them be. Let them be wild. Oh, it's it's camp. All the time. Camp, uh, huh? I used to fight all the time with kids. It was amazing. Yeah, there were a lot of fights. There were, you know, it was a bunch of kids being bussed from Central Islip to this Paul Bunyan day camp. So uh, there was a lot of trouble, a lot of racial uh, uh, trouble back then. Even when you were like twelve, dude, it was Central Islip. Oh yeah. Yeah, and, and we'd be on the bus, and and it was just like the the black kids controlled the bus. You At know, 12 little, years old? Yeah, little skinny white kids. We're just sitting there like, oh, boy, don't mouth off. Don't mouth off. Oh, oh, why did I get smacked in the face? I didn't say a word. I didn't even eyeball them. You would get smacked? Yeah. Occasionally, you uh, just just as one guy was walking by, you'd get smacked in the face, and they'd all laugh and go, yeah, <laughs> as they walked. <laughs> Sorry. As they walked to the back of the bus, oddly enough, you know. Uh, they, they they had the freedom to sit wherever they want, but wanted to sit in the back so they could pull shenanigans on the, uh, the poor little white children of Central Island. Slap in the face? Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of slapping they stories in your childhood. By. I was constantly being slapped and crying. That was my whole childhood. <laughs> Poor Anthony. <laughs> Poor
poor me. I Thank he you, was Jimmy. Basically a punching bag. Here. I was so just <laughs> abused. It does, oh. ex- it does explain a lot, though. The mental abuse, and then we're, uh, like we're finally seeing where the seed was planted, uh, Jimmy. And I have so, I have so many like regrets that I remember in my head, like little moments that probably could have been happy moments that I just didn't do the right thing or something. There was I was in Central Islip. And uh, it, it was a lot, just a lot of racial trouble. I, I, it was, I guess it was, you know, during the uh, early 70s. And, um, you know, the races weren't getting along very well back then. And uh, uh, blacks were coming uh, out onto the, you know, this new sense of uh, empowerment. And it was time to get back at whitey. Yep. Uh, so, you know, us white kids kind of had to stick together and everything. But we never did. We never could. And then I remember one time there was a, a little white girl named, um, uh, her name was Dawn. It was kind of grossed me out a little because that's my sister's name. It's nothing worse than, like, being in love or lust with a girl that's the same name as your sister. I've said just the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and in Jimmy's case, it allows him to just relive uh, yeah, the fond memories. Nothing better. <laughs> and I would just, I, I, was telling, I was telling people how I really liked this girl and, yeah. And um, I guess the word got back to her, and, and I was sitting at my desk, and we had this thing where we all had to make these little – little, um, kind of like a scenery, a little scenery thing of uh, Thanksgiving or something. So I made little pilgrims and everything and set them up and glued them to some construction paper and, and did a whole nice thing. And, and then they brought in other classes to, to kind of look around at our thing. So I'm sitting at my desk all proud of my thing. And this girl, Dawn, comes by and um, and she looks at me and she must have gotten word that I liked her because she looked at my my stupid little construction paper thing and then looked up at me and, and gave me this smile. And I swear, I had to be probably nine years old at the time. But the smile she gave me, I still remember. It was one of the, it sent like like chills down my spine. And I was like, Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. And she kind of, like, looked at me a little more when she walked away to the next person's stupid display. That was probably a friggin' bodega or a crack dealer. (laughs) So I I was sitting there thinking this is great, and uh, I'm going to talk to her. Dude, I never mustered up the, the balls to say a word to her. And then it was just, you know... She goes along her merry way. I had that one moment of a smile, and, and I, I, I was, I was like, "Hey, it's it's eighty thousand years later, and I'm still regretting yeah. not talking to this girl at, at nine years old." Where's she at now? I'm... Ah, probably dating one of the black guys. Absolutely. Well, she's <laughs> probably dating a pilgrim. That had such an <laughs> impact on her. <laughs> I turned her off to white kids. Yeah, no go. Get him, gumption idiot that I was. But that might have changed your life. See, the good thing was if you would have talked to her, you might have dated her and then had self-worth, and you never would have been funny. You wouldn't have needed to be funny. You, that might have changed the course of your life. You might be right. That little, that little uh, dumb uh, kid might have wrecked you. Might you, you right. would have had five kids by now, too. It could have been. They could have changed. You know, that is odd that there's that, that little yep. – that might have been one of those forks in the road yes. in your life. And I, I, another situation happened in California, and I, I talked about this one uh a while back when uh, I was in school and this girl, very cute girl, was at her locker and she's bent down getting her stuff and some d- douche just kicked the locker door and hit her square in the head and, and she started crying. And I was like three lockers away. And all I wanted to do was go over there and comfort this crying girl that got her head smashed by the locker. And again, just what a pussy. I couldn't muster up the the confidence that a girl that just got her head smashed that if i gave her a little comfort she wouldn't just reject me so i'm sitting there and i uh, sh- should i go should i d- b- moment over moment over idiot just shut your locker go to class and regret it for 50,000 years are you um having a nervous breakdown no okay. no this is the stuff that keeps you from having a nervous breakdown you just vent it all out it's just memories of your childhood uh yeah. that like don't go away and for some reason it's odd that they stay with you uh, so vividly for so long but those are the things that made so here's the it thing. makes you who you are it makes you who you are because then now the way to get the girl 
is make her laugh, is do this. So that stuff kind of goes into making you, that stupid, that big-headed chick at the locker who probably deserved it and the one who would have hated you after two dates anyway, <laughs> not talking to them did change the course. That made you who you are. You never would have been as funny as you are if you had that kind of self-esteem. Yeah, there would have been no need for you to be funny. guess so. The I'd... girls liked you because you had cute hair. You would have just rely to get stupid hairdo. <laughs> just let him, let him vent, though, man. Of course uh... I would vent, but I mean, I relate to him. It's finally, uh, he's finally venting, getting this, getting this out. Yeah, getting all this crap out. It's just uh, this. I, I, and had an awful childhood. Let's be honest. There's so many stories like that. But I just sorry you know it was mom, though. But but I wanted to have a really good, fun childhood. So I did like with myself and a, a few friends and stuff. Like I, I, I think of a lot of times that I enjoyed. I had a lot of fun growing up as a kid. Did you ever enjoy your dad? But they were punctuated by, yeah, I enjoyed my dad a lot, but with this reservation, with this f impending doom feeling, uh, because it was just like being around him was a lot of fun, but there was always this element of danger. Like, I always felt like uh, I, I could be killed at any moment, <laughs> either killed in a, a horrific drunken wreck or shot accidentally or starved to death or uh, thrown from a horse. There was always just this element of danger that he felt um, in order to make me the, the guy he wanted me to be. He had to put me through this training course that uh, put me on the brink of death many times. So it was kind of odd. And, and but I definitely enjoyed 11? it. Uh, t 12 through 16, Man. around those years. I was thinking of your dad when you were talking about that Thanksgiving display. Mm -hmm. how, how long did that last when, uh, when you brought it home? Oh, who knows? He was probably uh, having sex with his gumar up in uh, Connecticut. <laughs> what a mess. Jesus. What, what's the matter, Joey? Because uh, uh, he, he used to fill uh, vending machines. That was his job. Sure. It's like, uh, I, uh, where, where were you? Oh, Connecticut. I don't remember your roots being up in Connecticut. <laughs> I had to pick some stuff up. Oh, did you? Why did it take two days? Uh, <laughs> Joey, don't think, don't think I'm stupid, Joey. I know what's going on. Shut up, bro. Oh, I got a stomach ache. Could you stop and tend to my tummy? No, we can't. Dad's having sex in Connecticut, and Mom's pissed. You'd fake injuries to get love and stop the fight. Oh, it was always a stomach ache. I never had a, a new one. I never had a new good one. It was always, I got a stomach ache. That's the worst. No, you don't. That's the worst thing to tell a father, by the way, that you have a stomach ache. I have a stomach you ache. Can, you can tell your mom you got a stomach ache, but your father doesn't want to hear you got that that lame stomach ache thing. It's a stomach ache. And Cause I men, because men don't get stomach aches. It was a tummy ache, and, and, and he would turn around and go, you don't have a stomach ache. And, and you wish you could just, like, project yourself as an adult into that kid to go, ah, yeah, you're right, I don't. <laughs> I said I have a stomach ache because you two are ruining me. You're just yelling. It doesn't end. It doesn't stop. Could you just leave each other so we can grow up in an environment not filled with hate? There. My stomach's fine. Put the Pepto away, Mom. The stomach's fine. You two are jackasses, and you're destroying your children. That was uh, 30 some odd years ago. You really should get was over it. Was it? You really should just get over it. <sighs> <laughs> well, wait, I have a question. About wow. You. I want to ask Dawn. <laughs> seemed like yesterday when I was saying it. <laughs> no kidding. Now, man. you saw this girl after she smiled at you. Did you see her in the hallway all the time and then just be afraid to walk up to her? Yeah, yeah. I didn't even make eye contact after that. Well, that's. That's normal crap, though. Dude, it might be normal crap, but I, we, everybody's an individual. So to me, it was like... It's not normal. But we, and then there was... Den what was her name? Oh, my God. Uh, Diane, I think, or Denise or something. And and uh, she was in the apartment complex that I lived in in Central Islip. And we went down in the basement and, uh, and uh, kissed in the basement. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool, you know? Uh, first time I ever did that with a girl. With a little girl. And um, then she uh, takes off. And uh, then I see her with uh, this kid named Keith doing the same thing. Yeah, that's just normal like, crap. Dude. You little slut. But it adds up. Yeah, but the f <laughs> it's normal crap to be scared to talk to a girl when yeah. you're growing up. I, I used to follow this girl home from uh, when I was in junior high. I had a, a massive crush on this girl. I don't want to say her name. I would follow her home. I would keep my distance, and, and, and it wasn't like I was stalking her because a lot of people walked home. I want to know her name. No way. Why? It's her first name only, of course, but what's her name? You no, it's it. all right. It's not Frank, is it? No, it's not <laughs> Frank. And um, 
I, I was never I was never brave enough to to uh, to walk you know completely up to her. I would keep my distance, and the whole time I'm like, "Come on, you could do it." I would have these conversations with myself. You could do it, and I would start walking a little faster. I'd get a little closer, still pretty far away, still a couple hundred feet away, and then I'd back off and have almost like a panic attack. And I never I never told this girl how much I uh, I liked her. Yeah. Never did it, but I, I followed her home for a long time. See, so you remember those things. Oh yeah, and, but, and they like Jimmy said, they all add up to be, normal, make you the person you are. But all that's normal crap. We could do an hour on this. Yeah, but I was constantly doing it. It was a par- part of my personality that I couldn't like. I couldn't make the move. I had no confidence as as a kid to uh, interact well, with wanna, girls in that way. You didn't want to confront anything. Cause well, because of your parents. Well, may- maybe, but I just didn't have any confidence, and I think that was pr- from growing up in like that that uh, household. Probably. That environment was probably not the most conducive to building a child's confidence. <laughs> Oof. All right, we uh, we have to take our first break. No, but... we can't. I'm in the middle of a crisis. No, I want to hear more of this from you. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Jim, uh, Jimmy, yeah, yeah. very Anthony, interesting stuff. Anthony is finally venting, and we'll. Uh... We'll continue. Oh, I've, I've, I've vented about my stupid childhood for years. Nah, it's a little different. Oh, but then, God, you're like you're like a 13 year old kid today. Yeah, yeah, you're having Ooh, a nervous cool. breakdown. This is if awesome. I was like a 13 year old kid, I'd be in the bathroom doing what 13 year old kids do. By the way, if you're gonna have a nervous <laughs> breakdown, make sure it might make sure it's around 7:30 because that's 7:30. That's when we have our biggest audience. All right, all right. You will let us know if that lamb takes a look at your little display, <laughs> won't you? <laughs> <laughs> we got Kelly from Michigan. She wants in on this discussion. Is it a she? Uh, I don't know. Kelly. But Kelly Leak wasn't. Kelly. Good morning, guys. Yes, it's a she. She's a broad. Hi, Kelly. Hi. What's hey, up? You know what? I thought this was the Dr. Phil show. <laughs> the Dr. Phil show? Yeah. Did I, did I tune into the wrong station? Well, Ant's uh, venting a little bit. Oh, Possibly geez. getting close to a nervous breakdown, I'm thinking. And, I, don't, uh, I don't think so. I'm just kind of, you know, uh, remembering, remembering and, and venting. And not even like uh, memories coming out of nowhere. This is stuff I've I've remembered my whole life. I look back fondly on a lot of it. Uh, it's nostalgic. It's very Wonder Years ish. But it's um, you know how it still affects you. So like you still get that feeling. Like you'll think about that girl looking at the thing, and, and that smile still means something. Oh, it was so oh. it was so sweet and nice. I was thinking about uh, you know the girl I would follow home. During the break, and I, as soon as we went to commercial, I told, I told Jimmy uh, the name, yes. and and then I realized why didn't I just say the name on the radio? Yeah, her name's uh well, her see, I, name. I'm, I'm still scared to say well, it. Now. And I her her first name's Ann, but um, because I think it brings you right back. Like, oh my God, she might be listening. <laughs> oh jeez, I, I could give a I crap. got a call. I could give a crap about this girl I used to follow home, but it brought me right back because Anthony had reminded me of something, and I was scared to say her name because I'm thinking she might be listening to the show, and I don't want to know what she really thinks of me. Oh. You it was keep, 20 some odd years ago or whatever it was. Just keep that in that time capsule, where, where, whatever it was. Right. How old were you when you followed her home? Uh, like junior high. Oh, oh, you're older than like seven, right? Okay, you like. Oh no, I was like thirteen. You followed her home last week. Yeah, last week, right? <laughs> I follow her kids home now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kelly, thank you. You can have. Yeah, it is time to get over it. So. Oh, uh, I'm re- you know something. The truth of the matter is, I'm really over uh, a, a lot of stuff. It's just um, uh, there. There are kids that went through a, a hell of a lot worse than I did. Uh, these are just these are just childhood moments. Like Ope said, a lot of kids go through the same things, but it affects you and kind of not so much now. You're not sitting there uh, now still freaking out over anything, but it kind of made you who you were. You kind of bounced off of these events when you were growing up and all through your life. You, you bounce off these events, and it kind of guides you down whatever path you end up at uh, the end of. And, uh, you know, those little moments are one thing. And and it was directly because I didn't have any confidence mm-hmm. to go out and and really, you know, assert myself and and say, hey, uh, I'm sorry, you that idiot hit your head on the locker, you know. Let me let me let me rub the bump on your head. Aww. You could rub the Aww. bump in my. <laughs> <laughs> if it's any consolation, hold on to it. The guys that would have walked up to her and comforted her or, or smiled back and went, oh, I'm glad you like my little project. And there are plenty of kids like that. Yeah. None of them are funny. Y- yeah. Almost none of them 
could make anybody laugh. It's a total lack of confidence That's that you just it. have to start making stupid jokes. It is a desperate reach for love. It's a plea for attention. Of course it is. It's like, this is what I have to give you here, oh. here. But you know what? 35 years later or whatever, it's better to have that oh. than, than a stupid high school football jacket, which you would have gotten. Who cares? <laughs> Talking over the glory days. Hey, he ran for 65 against Central. <laughs> Bunch of douches. So good for you not to say hi to her. Made you who you are. <laughs> Central! Oh, Jimmy puts things in such great perspective. Remember the big win over Central! Yeah. Look, man, we're all, it's, it's weird. It's like when I think of the girl that I liked when I was a kid. I picture. I still have a feeling for her, but I don't picture her as an adult. I picture her as yeah, a third, exactly. a fourth, and fifth grader. Like I had that little pic image of her, at, like I, in the school picture, and that's yeah. you know, how you think. So yeah, it's still very affecting. Yeah, there was a girl um, hmm, that I really had a huge crush on growing up, and I did try, and she wouldn't give me the time of day. And then you fast forward a many, many years, and I'm at a high school reunion. And this uh, girl is completely following me around the entire time, loving my ass, loving my ass because of who I am now. Oh, and I was like, you know what? She wants the uh, Hughes fortune. I'm like, you know what? Go, <laughs> go f yourself. This and I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, reunion. Go f yourself. How old were you when you liked her? Honestly, from uh, kindergarten all the way. Uh, for, for most of high school. Oh, okay. I would keep going back to this one girl like, wow, man. And we, uh, you know, when we were in kindergarten and in grammar school, we, we, we would talk. We'd go to each other's house. You know, nothing big. No kisses. None of that. Never got to that. But always had something for her. And, man, when I, I went to this high school reunion a few years back, wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and I'm like, get lost. <laughs> you, don't, you don't think I, I, I see this coming? You know that it's how it, how it affects you. Is this, I, when I, I was kind of in love with this girl when I was in fourth or fifth grade, whatever. And now I look back on it, and I realize that she didn't like me as much as I liked her. And I remember going to her house one time, and uh, we were going to hang out. And then her and my friend kept going down to the basement. And they're like, "Just wait up here." So I was like, "Okay," and I waited up there. <laughs> oh, my oh, God. oh no! <laughs> oh God! Years later in high school, he told me, like, "Yeah, that day she and I were downstairs making out." And I got, this is, you know, it was years later, oh, I got so God angry. I didn't tell him damn. I got angry, because I knew that made me a kook. But I was, like, so angry, and it's like, I don't trust women. And it's probably why. You were just... The one girl I, I really liked, all of a sudden, I never want to be the guy that doesn't know. Right. Like, the guy that's like, yeah. oh, my God, I thought... I never want to be the guy that has the revelation and realizes he's been made a fool of all Right, of all. right. right. I look back, and that day... God, you were innocent, Jimmy, and she's downstairs oh. basically losing her virginity, or what would be your virginity at that age. <laughs> Oof. Like stupid, non-kissable, chapped lips. So that's not crazy stuff. No, it really isn't. There's, hey, there's uh, uh, one, more, one more of these uh, horrid little oh, no. stories of, of no confidence or anything and, and not being able to see my hand in front of my face. Uh, before I left to go to California, um, I'd been living in, in Huntington, right behind... Um, Fred's Diner over there. Uh, oh, knows where that is. And um, there was this uh, girl, Leanne. Me and Leanne were buddies from the time I moved in there as as a kid, growing up into like you know preteen dumb, kind of junior highish sure. age around there. Uh, and uh, before I went to California, uh, it was like, all right, take it easy and stuff. We'd always hung out, and I was really just in love with this girl. Um, and then I went to California, and I get a letter from her, and it's just her writing, I can't believe you, you left. Uh, I'm so in love with you. And she was circling where her tears were hitting the page as she was Ew. writing. And, I, and I'm like, I'm an idiot. I'm 3,000 miles away now. I'd have, like, you know, I'd have stayed in, in New York probably if, it was, uh, uh, if the, I knew how this girl felt. And we hung out like every day. Well, did you like her like that? Yes, but I we hung out all the time. But I was just an in, in, in inept, complete lack of confidence douche who couldn't see like what was going on. I thought we were friends, and I never ne wanted to make that next step because I I didn't want the rejection or I just uh, didn't have the courage to do it. It's just you know an ass. How old were you when she wrote you that letter? Uh... 30. 
No, no. <laughs> it's always funny to say you're older. It I makes know. you seem silly. <laughs> uh, I love exaggerated humor. <laughs> probably 12 or something like that. When's the next time you saw after that? Oh, man, when I came back from California. And then forget it, you know, everybody's just having their own good time and off on their own own ways, and it was, you know, completely over. So, but my mother told me, she goes, uh, Leanne came to, because when I was on the phone with my mother from California, and she goes, Leanne came to the door and uh, asked where you were, and I told her you were in California, because I, I told her I was going, but I guess I didn't say the day or anything like that, and then I left, and she goes, and she just started crying. I was like, oh, well, that's odd, and then I got the letter. I, My baby, she wrote me a letter. Dun, 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 dun. Wait, did you ever see Leanne? I have to know what happened to Leanne. Yeah, I, I, I saw Leanne after that because uh, I, I had con- came back from California, moved into the same neighborhood that I was at the same house. Tell you the truth, she still lived like across the street. I, I moved into the same house after I came back from California, went to the same school, and I come walking in, and there's a big difference between 12 and 16. Mm-hmm. So I came walking in, and people were kind of like. I think I know this guy, but I'm looking around going, I know you. I know everything about this person. I know this. So I'm kind of walking around because I disappeared from the face of the earth for a few years, uh, according to these people. So, But they were different people, too. You know, they were all older. And, uh, yeah, I kind of picked up with old friendships, but for the most part, just made new friends. Leanne, I kind of talked to her and stuff, but she was in her own crowd. She ended up being, like, very hot. Uh, so she hung out with the... You know, hot girls and perish the thought I, I, I approached them. I'd rather stand in the back hall in my army jacket, smoking pot with guys, uh, wondering why there are no girls around us. <laughs> Where's Leanne now? Uh, I don't know. You don't want to know. I don't know. Can I, can I be honest? With Where's you? Leanne? You don't want to know where these girls are now. No, no probably them. not. I no. think it helps sometimes, though, to, to kind of like put, to kind of not feel bad about no, it anymore. And you look at them now and you go, oh, yeah. They're middle aged right. women heading toward <laughs> menopause. You really. <laughs> Let's be honest with each other. We have these memories of what they used to look like and what they used to do for you. I don't want to know where these broads are. No, I'm saying that's good with regret, though. If you have regret, if you look at them now, it's like, ah, how can I regret that? Look at you. You're a pig. Look, <laughs> look we got everyone fooled. They think we're in our late 20s, early 30s. But oh, really? <laughs> Some of the girls we dated are heading toward menopause at this point. <laughs> Don't, it's right over the over the hill. It's right around the bend. I uh, I got it. There was this girl I mentioned it recently on the show um, when we were talking about long distance relationships, and I just am convinced they just don't work whatsoever. Because I had one when I was going to Geneseo with this girl. She lived in Utica, and we wrote uh, letters all summer long back and forth. With each other. I got a stack. I just remember this: a stack of letters from her, still tied up in a bow or something. At my mom's house, I'm gonna bring them in, Oof. and I'm gonna read a I'm gonna read a letter or two. Oh yeah, because N- now knowing what I know, as she's writing these letters, she went uh, went back out with her uh, her ex, who was the star football player for Central <laughs> Central. <laughs> she was banging him all summer long while she's writing me these awesome like uh, romantic letters. So now I gotta bring these in and read them on the air. Wait, did she circle I, other things on the paper? Like, right. Where he had Instead left little tears. marks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where he hit my back and it fell on the paper. Oh, so. she, oh, <laughs> oh she played God. it pers- perfectly. She she wrote nice things. She uh, quoted uh, lyrics from hot songs of the day and uh, and perfume on the letters, all that stuff. And then I find out like you know later on that she that the whole time she was banging. Uh, her ex, who was the quarterback of Central. Central. He was behind her, and her face was pressed into the paper so hard, it looked like the Shroud of Turin. Right, right. <laughs> she must really love me. Speaking of not trusting uh, women, because now I just I just assume, like, like they're naked together, and, and I'm the, I'm, I was the joke the whole time, where the guy's like, all right, here, write this, write this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're writing the letters together, because I was so effing gullible, I guess. I will bring them in and read them on the air. Yeah. That'll be fun. Definitely. That oh. would be fun, knowing you know what, what I know and what the listeners know. Now. That'll make some chills. I wish I would have saved like letters and things, and but uh, too embarrassing. There's a girl that broke up with me uh, that I wrote a letter to, and you don't realize till later how just how completely um, impossible it would have been to get that girl back. Like, it was just over, you know. She had moved on, and you are just a distant memory. But you think there's this chance if you you write this nice, like, letter or something, and it was just, ugh. 
Just talking about how, you know. Hoping she'll forget that you had sex with her best friend. No, it was, it was even like, <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't anything like that. Moments. It was just like, you know, it was that, it's that time when they just decide, you know, or you decide, eh, yeah, you're just going to leave. Yeah. yeah. It's done. You know, you're early teens. You're in school. It's those school relationship things. And then they just find someone else, you know. <laughs> One day they walk down the hallway and go, ah, okay, I'll, I'll go out with him. And then you're just left there. <laughs> so you write your little letters. <laughs> but oh, we're so made for each other. <laughs> made for each What? At 14? I'm not like, even completely made yet. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even cooked. <laughs> I'm made for each other. Made. I'm not made. This thing uh, still needs a few parts. It still has some factory. ingredients. Right. <laughs> but you know what? When you look at this low self-esteem and not talking to a girl, then you look back at the times you talked to them and shouldn't have. <laughs> like, my self-esteem being low was justified. When I was in high school, I liked this girl, Michelle. I loved her. And I couldn't ask her out. But I finally had the courage. I looked her up in the phone book. Oh. And I called her. And I was like, uh... Hey, it's Jimmy. And she's like, hi. Like, and I'm like, uh, you don't want to go out with me, do you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's some confidence. She actually was kind of nice. She's like, no, I don't think so. But she wasn't hateful about it. She yeah. Nice. Well, tried, you put her in a great position. And I, I think I told you this. Right? I tried to be casual. I was like, well, that's that's the way the ball crumbles. Like, I tried to be funny. And oh, of, like, by, by mixing them up. Candles. Yeah. Yeah. Thinking she'd go, oh, wait, on the other hand, yeah. you're funny. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, Jimmy. plenty of just embarrassing, I just, I douchey just, moments. My low self-esteem was telling me the truth. <laughs> All right, now that we, uh, <laughs> uh, now that we got therapy out of the way, we're going to start the Opie and Anthony show after the break. <laughs> That's true. We're all on our periods. Yeah, we're going to. Just gonna... like waiting to exhale in a half a circle. <laughs> it's the Opie and Anthony show.